coverage and eventually sharing. Research data management does not exclude any discipline, though of course every discipline and subdiscipline will approach data management differently, um, even so far as not referring to their research outputs as data in the first place. Uh, research data management is good scientific practice and a research skill. If you are working with data in any way, you are already managing your data in some capacity. So let's look at the policy itself. Um, you can find the policy at science.gc.ca under research data management, or um, you can just Google it. Um, so I'm gonna jump over to the policy. Actually, I think I have to stop sharing and then share my desktop. Um, and I yeah, will um, uh, actually ask Jill to throw um, a, a link in the chat just um, with some recordings of our past workshops. I just um, remember that. Also, just um, I forgot to say that I am recording this um, just so that everybody knows just the presentation part and not the questions. Okay, so um, the policy is situated alongside the Tri-Agency Statement of Principles on Digital Data Management here, uh, which was released in 2016, I believe. Um, the Tri-Agencies have included an open letter uh, along with the policy where they describe that the agencies are taking a phased incremental approach to the policy implementation. Um, on this, in this open letter, they also um, indicate that they will uh, host some web webinars in the coming months to provide an overview of the REM policy and answer questions from the community so we can expect that and I will share them uh, probably through the staff um, bulletin when we do hear about that. Um, the uh, Along with the policy itself, um, the agencies have also included this um, FAQ on some of the major themes of the policy. So if there was anything I didn't don't cover today that you wanted to look a little bit more into, I do recommend going here. And um, of course, you can also reach out to me and uh, we can try to figure it out. Um, so I'll just get back to my slides. Um, Jill, can you see my slides? Yes, I can. See. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna, oops. <laughs> Sorry, or is it a clunky on Zoom? All right. So um, the DMP requirement or data management um, back data management plan requirement, um, as outlined in the policy, there are two requirements of researchers. One of them being this data management plan requirement. The policy states um, for certain funding opportunities, the agencies will require data management plans or DMPs to be submitted to the appropriate agency at the time of application, as outlined in the call for proposals. In these cases, the DMPs will be considered in the adjudication process. Um, for those who don't know, a data management plan is a living document that describes how the data um, will be collected and documented, um, formatted, protected, and preserved. Um, this requirement does um, help sort of with some of the confusion that there was when the draft policy was released around who the policy will apply to. Um, but according to the official policy, it will depend on the funding opportunity. So it's kind of one of those things we'll see, um, depending on who will be required to submit a data management plan along with their proposal. And then the timeline on this is showing us at uh, spring 2022, the agencies will identify the initial set of funding opportunities subject to the DMP requirement. And the agencies will pilot the DMP requirement um, before this date. So we can probably expect them um, sometime over the next year. There we go. Um, the second requirement of researchers is the data deposit requirement. It is important to note that this is not an open data requirement. Researchers are not required to make their data open. Um, the recommended approach, though, is as open as possible and as closed as necessary. Um, because policies like this have to take a broad approach, the terminology is not always widely understood, especially when dealing with an emerging area such as RDM. So for clarity's sake, um, what is meant by data deposit? It refers to when research data collected as part of a research project 
are transferred to a research data repository for preservation and sharing of data at the end of a project. So we're not talking about the data storage during um, the active phase of a project. This is the end of the project. Um, ideally, data deposits will include uh, accompanying documentation, source code, software, metadata, um, and anything that provides additional information about the data. The agencies will require the deposit to be made by the time of publication. This may help us some concerns over sharing data with um, the academic community too soon before the publication, as I know there are there, that concern does exist. Um, and I'll provide an overview of data uh, repository options a little later on. In terms of the timeline, um, the tri agencies have said that after reviewing the institutional strategies, which I will explain in a moment, and in line with the readiness of the Canadian research community, the agencies will phase in this data uh, deposit requirement. So we really don't have a clear idea of when this will be required, but we can expect it at some point. Um, the tri agencies have taken what they call a distinctions based approach to Indigenous data in this policy, whereby they've made some distinctions around First Nations, Inuit, and Metis data. Um, the third requirement requirement of the policy is um, requires institutions to create institutional RDM strategies that describe how institutions will provide its researchers with an environment that enables and supports RDM. In the strategy, institutions must recognize and support the idea that data created in the context of um, research by and with First Nations, Métis, and Inuit communities, collectives, and organizations will be managed um, according to principles developed and approved by those communities, collectives, and organizations, and in partnership with them. The agencies stipulate that for research conducted by and with First Nations, Métis, and Inuit communities, DMPs must be co-developed with these communities and should recognize Indigenous data sovereignty and include options for renegotiation of the DMP. And for data deposit, uh, Indigenous communities will guide and ultimately determine how the data are collected, used, and preserved, and have the right to repatriate the data. This could result in exceptions to the data deposit requirement. Um, so there were some concerns when the draft policy was released that um, Indigenous data would still be required to sort of fall within this data deposit requirement, but we're seeing in the policy itself um, that there'll be exceptions to this. Of course, um, the principles of ownership, control, access, and possession when it comes to Inuit First Nations and Métis data are the top priority. Um, I will be providing a handout to any all the registrants to the workshop that um, will provide a little bit more uh, information about um, the care principles that I have uh, here on the screen, if you're interested. So uh, here's sort of the implementation timeline altogether. Um, I mentioned the institutional strategies. Um, so the timeline on this, the U University of Winnipeg will need to make an institutional RDM strategy public um, by March 1st, 2023. So we have two years about to work on the strategy. Oops. So in, in anticipation of the policy, um, I have been working on a draft RDM strategy for you Winnipeg and have just kicked off a consultation process that involves stakeholders across campus, including an academic advisory group. Um, the strategy will focus around these six main themes from raising awareness of RDM on campus to data deposit. The intention is to not take a one-size-fits-all approach as much as possible. Um, and the intention is to involve the community in consultation and to work collaboratively across campus to provide support for RDM. The strategy will identify priorities such as supporting Indigenous data sovereignty, creating bottom-up discipline-specific support, offering guidance on um, current storage options at UWinnipeg, or writing RDM into your grant proposals, sort of as some examples. We will be um, uh, asking for uh, as many as possible uh, researchers at UWinnipeg to fill out an RDM survey 
um, which will help us with um, developing this strategy. We want to learn more about your current RDM activities and practices and um, any kind of needs that you have at the university with regards to RDM. If um, you're interested in joining the academic advisory group that will work on developing and providing feedback on the strategy, please reach out. We want um, researchers from across the disciplines. So I'm interested in, I think I've, I've connected with a few already, but I um, would welcome any interest in the advisory committee. So I'm gonna go over some resources that are available to you um, to get started on data management planning, thinking about your data deposit, and then resources available at UWinnipeg. Uh, Portage Network and National Research Data Management Network offers the DMP Assistant, a bilingual tool for preparing data management plans. Um, the tool follows best practices in data stewardship and walks researchers step-by-step -step through key questions about data management the result being a complete data management plan. Um, like I said, I have a handout that I will uh, share with attendees at the end or after the workshop. Um, and I'll link to the newest version of this tool, the DMP Assistant 2.0 that was just released like a couple weeks ago, um, along with some of the great training resources created by Portage, including DMP exemplars for a variety of disciplines. Um, they've got a whole a handful of these exemplars now and they kind of demonstrate what a DMP might look like for um, researchers from, from various disciplines. Um, data repositories fall into three categories, um, general repositories, domain specific, and then uh, local repositories, which are oftentimes general, um, meaning not specific to any discipline. Um, so an example of a general repository is the Federated Research Data Repositor Repository, or FERDER, um, which indexes um, uh, a huge uh, range of other data repositories, including um, the Dataverse um, system, which um, the University of Winnipeg uh, is a part of. Um, we are working on an institutional instance of Dataverse. It is forthcoming, um, but it will be a great um, option for uh, any uh, researchers who are interested in depositing their data in a local um, institutional instance of Dataverse. And then for domain-specific repositories, um, these would, may exist in many research domains, and uh, re3data.org is a great place to go. If you're not familiar with the uh, domain-specific repository for your area. And then um, institutional repositories, as I mentioned, um, we have uh, Dataverse, which is forthcoming, and then WinSpace, our institutional data repository for um, digital preservation. And um, the intention is to offer workshops on um, sort of the various areas of RDM um, over the next while. So focusing a little bit more on data deposit, I can get into Dataverse versus WinSpace and that kind of thing um, another time. The library can offer research and scholarship support um, from data management through to publication and metrics. I'm sure many of you on this call have had help from the library in some capacity. Um, so I will share the service menu along with the handout that I've uh, worked on. And it outlines the types of services we offer with the ten um, and uh, yeah. <laughs> when it comes to re uh, research data management, um, I can offer one-on-one -on -one RDM co consultation on data management planning through collection, storage, and sharing. Sorry, I got my computer making sounds in the background. Um, and then a couple of web resources we have available include our RDM website, um, a data security uh, FAQ, along with other data security guidance through the Information Privacy Office, which again, I'll share on this handout. Um, a significant service we hope to offer soon, as I've mentioned, is the our own instance of Dataverse. 
And um, there's various other internal and external resources that I will share along with these. So, wow, that was fast. <laughs> um, maybe I'll turn my camera back on. 